Hello again and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this episode I want to talk with you about my first impressions of the newly bought HEQ5 Pro mount. After using my old telescope with the cheap mount for some years and then for some years not um, it was time for me to get a new one if I want to get better in astrophotography. Um, if you're trying to find information in the internet about uh, mounts you or about equipment you need for beginning in this hobby, you often hear the uh, information that you should or the advice that you should buy a good mount. Invest the most of your money in a good mount. And um, in my opinion, this statement uh, seems to be true because if you have a really good telescope that is really big and can, of course, gather a lot of light and um, gets you a really good um, view of what you want to photo um, what you want to take a photo of. The problem is if you have a mount that is not um, suitable for that telescope, especially if it's too if it can't uh, hold enough weight, you will have problem problems with the image quality. This is because if you want to do a long exposure, as many of you know, um, you need to track the sky. The sky and the stars are apparently moving over the sky uh, on a certain amount of time. And um, to if if you do a long exposure, the stars will have a trail. Sometimes this is what you want. If you want to do a star trail photo, that's totally fine. But usually if you're trying to do deep sky astrophotography, star trails are not very common and not wanted. You want pinpoint stars. You want stars that look really sharp. And to get this, um, you need you have, you have two options. The first option would be to take, to take a um, short exposure. But the problem is, um, with these dim objects in the sky, you need to gather a lot of light. Of course, you could do a lot of short exposure pictures and you could stack them. Uh, what that means, um, I'm going to tell you in another story, but um, you could put this information together and then you could um, um, try to get the information out of that. But um, without getting to, into too much detail, this is often not the best, uh, best um, possibility you have. Another possibility would be to take a long exposure, but trying to move your scope with the sky. There are some options on how you could achieve that. The first one would be to manually guide your scope. Um, you could just look through the guiding um, through the guide scope, and you could try to stack a uh, track a star, and then you can uh, move on the right axis um, your mount. Because if you're trying to do a long exposure that might last about um, some two, three, five minutes, and you want to do a lot of these uh, exposures, this would be some, that would be really exhausting for you. Um, so there's another option. You could, of course, have a mount, or a lot of mounts come with an electrical motor inside. And these mounts are trying to track the sky on their own. You just tell them that they track, and then they will do this. The scope will, uh, the mount will move with the, um, with the movement of the stars. The problem is, at some um, through the time of your exposures, this will uh, degrade. So um, your your mount is not perfectly balanced or not perfectly um, set up to get the perfect tracking. So a lot of people are trying to do this tracking, but together with a guiding camera. You look through the um, you know, put a guiding camera on your guide scope, and this guiding camera is trying to. Um, to get the information of some stars or seeing some stars and then the, the guiding camera is trying to track the stars and uh, sending information to the mount and there are correction movements on the mount. And this is the best option for a lot of people who are trying to achieve good photos in astrophotography. Um, this was the option I wanted to go, so I needed to decide what mount I would like to have that fits all my needs. Before I did my research, I needed to know what um, are my requirements for the mount. And the first thing you would um, um, want to know about a mount would be on how much weight you can put on it. Because all the equipment you have 
like the telescope or the guiding camera, the guide scope, the camera itself that's taking the pictures of the object you want to take a photo of, all these um, equipment um, take up some weight on your mount and you need to know how much weight you want to put on there. Oftentimes um, you hear the advice that um, if you hear about the, or you get the information on the weight you can put on a scope. Um, for astrophotography you should take two-thirds of it. So um, I had some ideas about my telescope, uh, the equipment I have. I have a Canon uh, EOS 6D DSLR that I want to use for my astrophotography. I have I need a guide scope on it. Um, you need uh, some some weight for the dew heater and stuff like this. And when I did my calculations, um, I was around uh, five kilograms. And um, with that, there was um, only one real option for me. Um, back in the days when I wanted to have a better scope and a better mount, I always hear the name Skywatcher and I always um, or often saw these mounts uh, from Skywatcher, the Eco 5, the Eco 6, the Eco 3 as the smallest of these three and um, back then when I didn't have the money to um, afford myself a good mount and a good scope, um, it would have been, of course, the EQ3. But when you look at the specification of the eq 3 you can see that um, the, mount, the weight this mount can handle is about five kilograms. I had the opportunity to use an EQ3 uh, from my friend. And I have to say it's a good mount, of course, but uh, I wouldn't uh, put on it a real um, a hefty telescope. Um, of course, and all of this together, um, it was clear for me that I want a Skywatcher telescope because uh, it gets you most uh, for your money, in my opinion. Um, if you if you're trying to compare these uh, mounts, and um, then there was the option of the EQ5 or the EQ6. Um, well, because I'm starting this hobby again, I didn't want to get uh, all in in this and so it was of course the eq5 for me and as you might already know because of the title of this video i bought this one i got it really cheap and i got it with the motor of course with the go to um, um controller and i um yeah and now i want to show you uh what my first impression of this scope is uh, of this mount is the assembly of the mount is pretty straightforward and easy to do you just follow the instructions on your manual um, um, for most of the people, I think you don't need even you don't even need the manual. The overall quality is good. The everything feels really nice. I would prefer a dark coating, but this is of course my just my personal taste. You get two counterweights with the scope. A note here: when I first uh, tried to move the scope with the go to hand controller. I was pretty sure that they had forgot to send me one, but <laughs> just a look into the manual and uh, you see that you get uh, this um, Wi-Fi controller. Uh, the hand controller is not needed anymore and you could control your mount with a um, phone um, or an iPad and this is pretty convenient. And I have used the hand controller on the EQ3 and I have to say it's much more easier to get a star and to get all the um, information you need to um, set up the score to set up the mount. I really like the idea, and of course, um, the manufacturer don't have to manufacture these hand controllers anymore. It's good for the environment too. I think it's just personal taste, of course. Some people might like the haptic and the feel of a hand controller. With the app link in the description, of course, you are able to move the mount directly. Um, um, directly with these arrows here or uh, with um, a go-to uh, command. You're choosing your star or planet uh, or deep sky object and um, your mount will uh, automatically automatically um, go to this um, star or object that you choose. Um, of course only if you're good if you have a good polar alignment or an end if your uh, uh, mount is um, one, two, or three star uh, aligned. More on that later. On a side note here, I thought my <laughs> mount was uh, defect when I tried to move it with the hand controller. 
um, because it didn't move. Um, uh, I was on the under the assumption that you have to unlock these latches, which was not true. You have to lock it and then it will move. I have <laughs> opened up the mount just to see if there's ever anything wrong, but then it worked quite fine. You might hear it, but it's pretty loud. So I want to show you what's under the hood. As you can see, all is running pretty smooth. Here's something I heard uh, of before and was eager to see. It's the so-called and often um, yeah, f feared backlash. Uh, it's, um, you can see it here on the gears. Uh, when you're um, moving your scope, um, especially when guiding, when you're moving your scope in one direction with very small movements, and the uh, scope needs to get into the, or the mount needs to get into the other direction, um, you have this um, room on the gears and um, this would cause a so-called backlash. So it's just going into one direction. And then if it's trying to go back, it has to um, to, to uh, get over a certain space to move the gear uh, beneath. And um, this, of course, will um, cause, maybe cause some problems with guiding. Um, you can come by of these problems with a modification um, and as a uh, man who likes to uh, work on stuff, I needed to buy this modification. I'm going to tell you about this in another video and I'm going to tell you, uh, t um, show you the um, and how you would install it and um, um, how it could achieve better tracking. But it's I think it's not needed. Um, you could, as, um, especially in the beginning, you could uh, just use the EQ3 EQ5 um, without modification, and I think we will be fine. But um, I wanted to try it. <laughs> the mount comes with a pole finder. You look through here to search for Polaris, and then you have to put it on the right spot. There's an app on your you can install on your phone uh, that shows you where uh, exactly you have to put Polaris. And um, you will these, use these screws, uh, these handles to um, polar align your scope. Uh, in another video, I will show you how um, this will work with the EQ5. Overall, I'm really happy with this mount. It feels really good it feels like it has a really good quality um the movements uh, are really smooth and um it feels like it can handle uh quite some weight it is pretty hefty on the uh, on its own weight uh, i think it weighs about 23 or 25 kilograms or something like this um i wouldn't call it a mount you can easy travel with but uh, I think it's much easier than with an EQ6, who's uh, much, uh, uh, much heavier than uh, this mount. Um, it's easy to assemble. And um, after getting it, I think uh, about 20 minutes later, I was able to use it. Um, so it's easy to assemble. You can easy, it's easy to use. It's, and, and it's a really great mount. Of course, I have to see how it handles uh, when I'm trying to gather some light, um, but this is something for another story. Especially in the next episode, I want you to show um, the telescope I have chosen for this mount and with my camera, and I'm pretty excited about it. 
I hope you are too. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please uh, push this uh, thumbs up button. And if you, of course, want to see the next video and I want to get some information about it, please subscribe my channel. So until then, I wish you all the best and clear skies. Thank you.